Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank very much the organizers of uh, this forum for inviting me today. Uh, I'm very pleased to be uh, in a country and a city that is so uh, strongly connected with uh, flowers. And I look forward to uh, also learning from you uh, during my visit uh, here in South Korea. Uh, I would like to thank also the, the mayor of Goyang for uh, his very, um, very interesting speech and very uh, to the point uh, comments. I hope I will provide some additional uh, inputs, but uh, I must say all the points that you highlighted are very, very uh, relevant indeed for the, de the current developments in the, in the flower industry globally. So thank you very much. Um, I would like to first explain uh, who I am and uh, which organization I work for. So my name is uh, Sylvie Mamias. I'm the Secretary General of um, Union Fleur, which is the International Flower Trade Association. So we are an international umbrella organization uh, representing uh, the global interest of uh, countries, the countries involved in the, um, in the production, uh, trade, import exports, and uh, wholesale and distribution of uh, cut flowers. We have a global um, uh, membership in about 20 countries uh, worldwide including all the major countries that are involved nowadays in the, in the production and trade of flowers. So the Netherlands, Colombia, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, Germany, Italy, France, the US, um, and also Japan are members in our organization. And all together we represent uh, over 3,000 companies uh, globally that um, account for about 80% of the total um, global trade of cut flowers. So I think we're quite well representative uh, globally of this, um, of this industry. Just to show you a picture of the, the various countries. So South Korea is not there, but you are <laughs> most welcome to consider also joining our organization uh, to get uh, closer connected to the, to the flower industry in the future. So I will uh, today cover, give you um, an overview of the, the current uh, situation in the global flower industry, uh, basically the key characteristics and the main uh, dynamics that we are observing. So it will be, um, helicopter view, so that means I don't have time to get in all the details, but hopefully I'll give you some uh, key uh, characteristics and, and trends that can be useful also for the, the, the attendees today and uh, the future um, work that is going to be carried out uh, in, in uh, Goyan about the, the future of the flower industry. <clears throat> So I will look at uh, mostly production, uh, trade, and consumption globally. And then I will point out some uh, specificities of the, of the international flower su supply chain. So first of all, um, well, this is interesting because um, if you look at the production of cut flowers globally, you see that um, in red, uh, basically Asia, so the whole um, region, region of Asia is by far the, the, the largest producer of flowers in terms of, um, of um, production areas. So there are some key countries, uh, well, China, uh, India are by far uh, very important suppliers. Thailand is also a very important um, producer of uh, cut flowers and um, yeah, the rest of the world is less, the, the, the production areas are more limited. So Asia is by far the leading uh, producer of cut flowers. Now I'm going to look at the trade. And you will see that uh, it's a different, it's a very different picture. 
So in terms of imports, uh, the leading uh, countries for imports of flowers uh, are Germany, uh, the Netherlands, uh, the US, and the United Kingdom. Um, as you can see, uh, there's no, so the, the areas in, in red on the map. The rest of the world, and in particular Asia, doesn't come out as a very strong uh, import region for cut flowers. Now, looking at exports, uh, it's even more um, it's even more interesting. Basically, um, Asia is not uh, a key exporter of cut flowers. The key exports are in other areas of the world. So it's basically, well, by far, the Netherlands, um, and then Colombia, uh, Ecuador in South America, and then in Africa, uh, um, Kenya and Ethiopia. So, as I said, production in Asia is very important. Trade, not so much. So it's, it's a very um, interesting uh, picture and maybe something where you can draw conclusions from or, or take uh, inspiration to look at uh, how things could be, um, could be evolving in, in the future. So this is the global picture. Now, if I look at, um, and I hope you can see, if I look at the breakdown by uh, exports of specific flower varieties, so there are uh, five main categories of uh, flowers that are traded globally, exported and imported globally. Roses, uh, chrysanthemums, carnations, orchid, and lily. And then if we look at the breakdown by uh, specific varieties, then the picture is a bit more uh, diverse. Um, so that means there is, uh, if we look at the specifics, there is a greater diversity of supplying countries. For example, chrysanthemum, uh, countries like Malaysia, China and Vietnam are important um, exporters. Carnation, uh, Turkey, Spain and Italy. Uh, orchids is very strong in the, um, from the Asian region, so from Thailand, Taiwan and Singapore. And then finally, lily. Um, this is the one flower category where South Korea has, uh, comes out as, as uh, an important exporter together with China and Costa Rica. Now looking at the, at the movement of uh, flowers globally, so it, it reflects what I showed um, a bit earlier. So basically um, the arrows on the map indicate the movement of flowers. So as you can see, there is little movement in the Asian region. The, um, the main movement of flowers is basically between South America to North America, and then from Africa to uh, Europe. So these are the main, the key, um, the key, uh, the key routes to the market, to the destination markets. And in the, in the middle of everything, you have the Netherlands that play a very important role as a, as a global international hub for flowers. So in total, uh, nowadays, uh, the global trade of flowers is estimated about uh, 15 billion euro per, uh, per year. So this, has, this was not always the case. So I'm going to look briefly at how, how it came to this uh, situation. So there was a, a very strong intensification of, uh, and globalization of production and trade of flowers, basically since the 1990s. So in about, uh, in the last 13 years, the, the, the value of the world trade of flowers has um, multiplied by 15. So from 1 billion euro in 1990 to 15 billion euros since uh, 2015. So there was a very strong um, increase in the, in the global trade and the global flower industry. 
If I look at the, the key suppliers to the, the global flower market, there are some interesting developments as well. So as you might be aware, the Netherlands are indeed um, the key country in uh, horticulture, floriculture, for everything, for uh, production, breeding, uh, <laughs> uh, trade, uh, distribution. They are really at the center of the flower world. So, um, and this has been the case since the, the 1950s. Now, their, their place in the global market tends to decrease in terms of, um, of uh, share of the market. It's still very strong. It's still about 50% of the, the global market is uh, dominated by the Netherlands. But what we have seen uh, in the matter of 10 years, so between 2005 and 2015, there was a strong um, emergence of other supplying countries and basically four key countries uh, for the, the flower industry nowadays. Colombia, which is now the, the second biggest um, supplier to the global market after the Netherlands. Then Ecuador, then Kenya, and then Ethiopia. And those four countries in the matter of 10 years have now captured uh, almost another another half of the market. So they have now all together, these four countries have the same um, share of the market than the Netherlands alone. So this has been a very important development uh, in, in uh, recent years. These countries export all over the world uh, to more than uh, 50, de de 50 destinations. And they're really um, uh, regional powerhouses when it comes to flowers. So as I showed on, on the map before, Africa, uh, the, the countries in Africa supply mainly the, the European market. Uh, the countries in South America supply mainly the Northern American uh, market. So this is where, where things uh, stand for the moment. This has been a, a very important um, uh, very important development in the global flower industry. The importance of the, of the supplying developing countries has had a very important socio-economic contribution in the countries of production. So I've just shown here uh, the importance of floriculture in a country like uh, Kenya, which as I said is now the number four suppliers of flowers in the world. Um, so the contribution of flowers to the Kenyan economy is uh, extremely important nowadays. About four million people are depending now for, um, uh, with a job in the flower industry. 70% uh, are women, so there's also a very strong contribution of the flower industry in terms of gender contribution. And uh, it brings a lot of um, economic benefits to the country uh, and to the national economy. So now looking uh, very broadly, <coughs> I'm sorry, looking very broadly at consumption, Consumption part. <coughs> Could you get me some water, please? Thank you. Uh, looking at the, the patterns for consumption. So again, I'm not going to get into the details, but basically um, the global market is very uh, concentrated in terms of consumption. Thank you. So altogether, um, there are basically three main uh, countries that capture most of the consumption of flowers in the world. So you, uh, the EU, Japan, and the US, the three of them together capture about 70% of the world consumption of flowers. So that means that there is still uh, room for expansion, for development in other uh, countries, other economies. 
and uh, yeah, room for development for new new uh, consumption patterns in other countries. Um, so for the diversification. And actually, if we look at, this is an estimate of the, the global development that we can expect uh, for con uh, consumption of flowers, looking at the main regions in the world, uh, over, let's say, the, the next 10 years. So what we see is basically uh, at the bottom, the, the two main um, uh, regions, Europe and North America, they have they expected to have a very stable uh, consumption uh, level. So basically, those markets are very mature, and there are not so many opportunities to further increase uh, consumptions. It could be in very specific uh, premium markets or premium products or some specific niche niche, but overall. Um, yeah, those markets are stable and saturated in a way. So the, the, the perspectives for increase of consumptions are in other regions, and in particular Asia. Oh, so Asia is the, the light blue uh, uh, developments. So there, um, the, the analysts estimate that there is still uh, quite a room for um, increase of, uh, of consumption. Other areas as well in the world, like uh, for example, the, the Gulf countries, Middle East countries, are uh, regions where there could still be um, quite a development of uh, consumption in the next 10 years. But Really, Asia is the, is the region that expected to perform uh, the most in terms of uh, increase of consumption, with a projection of uh, plus 6% uh, in the next uh, 10 years. So I think it's quite remarkable and it's something that uh, shows how important it is for a country like South Korea to, um, to look into these developments and indeed see where you can invest and how you can um, uh, promote flowers uh, to make sure that this consumption um, increase uh, do happen in the coming years. So now I'm going to look at some, um, some of the key characteristics of the global flower industry. And what I mean is really the supply chain. So we. I've been showing you the, the main patterns of, of trade. Now, what is behind it in terms of uh, specificities and, uh, and characteristics? So first of all, there, there are some very important uh, character, characteristics that are really related to the product itself. Cut flowers are very uh, perishable products, very um, uh, fragile product with a very short life, life cycle. <coughs> So it is a very important uh, characteristic for the, the, the international supply chain in general. There's also a very large uh, assortment, so that means a large number of flower varieties and species that are being traded all over the, the world. And it's all, uh, finally, it's an all year round uh, industry and trade. So that means that there are um, sometimes some very uh, high uncertainties in terms of demand and supply. Uh, it does fluctuate over the year, depends on, uh, on, the, on the seasons, on the market trends, trends, on the production conditions. So it's, um, uh, yeah, it's an industry that functions all year round and must find basically the, the quality products to supply the market globally all over the year. That being said, there are also some very specific uh, peak seasons, uh, and this might be more Western than, than here. So yeah, take it with a bit of uh, distance. I'm, I'm not so sure how it applies in a country like South Korea, but on the Western side, um, uh, springtime is really the, the main time for, uh, for flowers. Uh, there are some very specific flower uh, celebrations. Uh, the, the most well-known is uh, Valentine's Day on the 14th of February, but also Mother's Day uh, between March and May. 
and uh, International Women's Day on the 8th of March. So those dates are really the peak season for the, for the industry and for the global uh, trade. So that means there are huge volumes of flowers that uh, must reach the destination markets on time for these celebrations. So it puts a lot of pressure on the supply chain and on the logistics globally for a few days uh, during the, the year. So overall, because of the, the product uh, specificities and because of the peak seasons as well, um, it's very important, as, as the mayor mentioned, to have very efficient uh, logistics, a very, a very good uh, cold chain management and integrity throughout the whole supply chain to maintain the quality of flowers so they can, they can travel all over the world and reach the destination market and still be in good quality uh, for, um, for consumers. So the logistics, um, the processes are very important. They must be very smooth, very speedy and very efficient all along the supply chain from production to, um, to uh, consumers. Uh, and this is also how uh, the flower industry has grown globally. And this is how competitiveness of the main supplying countries is, um, is based on, is ba based on this uh, capacity of managing the supply chain and uh, bringing quality products to the markets. And obviously this is where um, the Netherlands have, uh, have maintained a really a strong uh, dominance over the market. It's, it is also because of their management of the supply chain and of the logistics. So just to show you uh, very synthetically uh, what we call the supply chain. So all the various steps um, from uh, well, basically production, uh, even yeah, starting with, uh, with uh, seeds. Uh, into production and then all the various steps uh, along the supply chain globally to bring uh, flowers to uh, the flower shops and then to the consumer, cons the final consumers. So a number of steps uh, and at each step it's very important to, to have the best uh, logistics, the best processes and also to maintain temperature control um, to maintain the quality of the flowers. So overall, in, uh, uh, we call it pre premium on, on speed because basically all these steps uh, to bring flowers to the market uh, happen usually in about 48 hours. So it's, it's quite... Um, it's quite... Uh, an achievement to basically be able to, uh, to, to take flowers, let's say, from Kenya, bring them up to the final consumers in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, in the Netherlands, in France, in Germany, uh, in, in uh, 48 hours in total. So now that I've uh, presented the key characteristics of the, the global flower industry, now I'm going to uh, look into the perspectives and the prospects. So what is coming up? What are the dynamics that we see and the, the trends that are emerging? And in particular, also, what are the opportunities um, nowadays? So in recent years, there's been uh, quite a number of challenges uh, for, let's say, the global flower industry, flower uh, supply chain. The most uh, obvious, as the mayor mentioned already, has been uh, obviously COVID, COVID-19. Uh, the pandemic uh, globally has, has put a lot of um, disruption into the, the flower supply chain. Um, and, and countries are now recovering from this, but it's been a very testing uh, time, but also a time to learn some very uh, important uh, lessons that I think are going to be uh, useful for, 
for the future. So what we see now, um, I think, can be divided into uh, two main categories, what we call external factors and then internal factors. So external factors to the flower industry that have a challenging impact on the functioning of the industry well, first of all, the economic situation now globally, uh, economic recession um, in the major destination uh, markets, uh, Europe, uh, US, Japan, as I've shown, uh, all these countries are, are going through uh, difficult economic times. Uh, inflation is, is very strong at the moment. And we know that flowers uh, don't perform very well usually at times of uh, economic recession because it is still um, luxury goods. So indeed, uh, um, if, if the rest of like, um, uh, goods are getting um, much, uh, much more expensive, like food, there will be less uh, purchasing power for flowers for a uh, majority of consumers. So this is a very important external factor that the industry has to deal with. Um, another point is uh, where are the concerns related to climate change, uh, the environmental um, impact and performance of the supply chain in general. So all along the supply chain, production, transport, packaging, for example, are uh, very sensitive areas where, the, where the, the flower industry is being challenged. Um, and there is also um, increased uh, scrutiny from society, from consumers and from governments on the, the environmental performance of the flower industry and basically on the sustainability of the flower supply chain. In particular, from consumers, there, are a, there is a growing demand for sustainable products um, and for local products. So it doesn't, it doesn't fit very well with the, with the picture I've, I've, I have shown you at the beginning where um, uh, we have a very uh, global uh, supply chain. So there is, there are some tensions indeed uh, uh, at the moment between global sourcing, global supply versus local sourcing, local su uh, supply. I believe there will be a balance. So, so this this will balance out, and 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 um, and um, the industry will find a way to deal with this uh, with these contradictions or conflicts, but. At the moment, it's, it is quite an important uh, um, factor to take into account when we look at the future. We uh, are also faced with uh, increased biosecurity risks, and by this I mean all, I mean all the risks related to uh, plant health and uh, phytosanitary uh, risk. This is also related to climate change. But basically, uh, there are more and more um, uh, problems linked to the presence of insects and diseases in plants. Uh, and this is where uh, breeding, for example, has a very important role to play to also help uh, fight this uh, risk, fight, find solution. So uh, flower production and trade can continue in the, in the best conditions because it's in uh, everybody's interest to basically deal with a, a safe product uh, that do not present a risk for ecosystem or bring uh, diseases uh, around. <clears throat> Another factor is, uh, and that's particular since COVID, there's been an, uh, rising pressures on logistics, on transport, um, and on air freight capacity in particular. That was one of the main uh, problems the, the supply chain was faced with during the pandemic. So these are uh, uh, concerns, uh, issues that are there and there to stay. So the, the industry has to look at it and see uh, what kind of solutions can be, can be worked out. And in general also, if we look at the, the, 
activities of uh, government and uh, regulations, uh, there is uh, more and more complex market access conditions for uh, countries supplying flowers to other markets. Uh, they really have to um, to fulfill uh, a lot of uh, uh, regulatory norms and standards uh, to fulfill phytosanitary requirements and also uh, the expected standards from uh, market and retail. So it is, um, it is a complex uh, picture nowadays, uh, and, and, but it's very important for the supplying countries to make sure that they uh, secure their market access conditions uh, in order to be able to supply other markets. And then I've also uh, listed in external factors, uh, geopolitical tensions, uh, growing protectionism. These are um, important factors at the moment. Uh, and so we have to see how this, uh, this impact the global flower industry, but for, sh for sure, it is now uh, in the picture. Then looking at some of the internal factors, so internal to the industry, there are also some uh, important factors that uh, at the moment challenge a little bit the, the traditional dynamics of the flower industry. So we see, uh, for example, an increase of cost at all levels, so because of energy, uh, energy costs, uh, production costs, freight costs, freight cost and trade. So at all levels at the moment, uh, there's a lot of pressure on, on, um, on cost. Another element that we see is an um, increase of the digital development within so it's both within the supply chain, so that means internally the processes are now um, extremely digitalized and will be more and more digitalized, but also at the point of, of sale, sale. So we've seen a, a strong emergence of uh, e-commerce, online retail, specifically during the COVID pandemic. That was one of the, of the, of the key uh, developments, new developments during the pandemic. Um, this is going to continue. So the, 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 the traditional flower supply chain needs to learn also from this and, and see where it needs to adjust also to respond to the, the growing um, digital uh, developments. Overall, there is also uh, a strong pressure for optimization of supply chain operationally. So at every step, of the picture that I have showed you, uh, there is a need to optimize uh, as much as possible. So what we see uh, going on um, is a strong consolidation of businesses because to be able to be prepared for all these uh, challenges and be able to respond to, to them, companies needs, need to have the capacity to, uh, to invest and to be prepared for, for change. So there's been a strong consolidation of companies uh, and also a strong verticalization of the supply chain. So from production to, um, to uh, distribution, uh, we've, seen, we've seen this in, uh, in the last years. M much bigger companies much stronger companies to be able to uh, respond to uh, uncertainties and deal with the, the risk uh, related to the supply chain. Uh, and overall, yeah, on the market uh, in recent years, there is a strong competition, hyper competition, uh, a lot of pressure on the prices, margin uh, and returns. So the profitability of companies in general as uh, is under pressure. So again, uh, this is challenging and the industry needs to find ways to, um, to work ar around this uh, to continue surviving and, and continue being uh, profitable. Now, it's, all, it's not all uh, negative. There are also some uh, interesting opportunities and emerging trends uh, for the industry that, that are uh, 
important to look at and, and, uh, and the mayor in his uh, introduction mentioned some of them. I think the topic uh, of the forum today is, is also a clear illustration. When you talk about uh, flower, is life, is the life, are the life? <laughs> this is, I think, uh, a very um, strong message uh, and a message that is very common across uh, the flower industry. We see an emergence of um, uh, awareness of the importance of having flowers in our life. Uh, this is something that has been very strong during the, the COVID pandemic. And we think that this is a, a very positive uh, agenda, actually, for the industry going forward um, to really promote uh, the contribution of, of flowers and plants to uh, healthy lifestyles for consumers. Likewise, uh, there is a greater uh, consumer awareness in re recent years about, about flowers, about the product itself, about also expectations. What do they expect in terms of uh, quality? As I said, in terms of um, uh, sourcing and, and sustainable production, environmental impact. So all this um, growing awareness can be seen as a challenge, but also as a very strong opportunity because this is going to stimulate innovation all over the, um, the chain to respond to the, to the questions and to the expectations of consumers. And this is also going to stimulate creativity, I believe, around the product. So I think there is a lot of opportunities there for flowers uh, and people who work uh, with flowers, like uh, florists and floral designers, events, etc., uh, there is a very strong opportunity uh, to capture there um, uh, with the greater uh, attention on, on flowers. The same way um, I was talking about the online sales that have uh, boomed uh, during the pandemic. So, as I said, it is a challenge for the, the flower industry to learn how to deal with this new um, sales. But at the same time, it's also a very uh, strong opportunity because um, I think it has enabled to capture new consumers, uh, people that were maybe not buying flowers uh, before the pandemic. So a new type of consumers, uh, more probably younger, younger consumers, uh, more digitally driven consumers. Um, so I think there is a, a lot to learn uh, from them uh, and basically a lot of opportunities to capture them by being able to keep them interested in the product, uh, keep them um, wanting to learn more and uh, buy more uh, flowers. Likewise, I said earlier, the sustainability, um, well, the pressure on the flower industry to be more sustainable is a challenge, but it is also uh, full of opportunities. So that means there will be a lot of uh, research and innovation that will go into uh, the products and into the supply chain to make it more sustainable. So looking at uh, packaging, at uh, flower varieties, um, uh, the phytosanitary uh, performance, the transport, etc. There will be a lot of strong opportunities emerging from, from this and a lot of investment in uh, research and innovation. So, on, yeah, overall, I think the, the, what we call the sustainability journey of the flower industry, so that means all, all the learnings in the recent years about how to make uh, the industry more sustainable, how to reduce the environmental uh, performance. Um, I think it will overall stimulate a lot of new opportunities. We see it uh, recently the most important development, I think, in that area is the, for example, the development of the transport by sea freight. Which, is, uh, which has emerged in, uh, in the last years as a, 
a strong alternative to transport by uh, planes. And so there are a lot of opportunities that, that will emerge uh, in that area. I think there is also a lot of uh, opportunities around what we call the storytelling. So it's really about promoting uh, the product, the, the flowers themselves, but also the flower experience. So everything around the sensation, the emotions, the, the benefits that flowers provide to, to us as people, I think is going to be a very important opportunity uh, for the industry going, going forward. And to conclude around this, um, I think all these developments, be uh, challenges or opportunities, they all call for uh, a stronger cooperation within the industry as a whole. So that means it's a global industry, so we need to learn and, and, and work with each other also globally and learn, learn from uh, the best practices all over the world to address the challenges and to capture opportunities so we can continue promoting uh, beautiful products and a beautiful flower industry. So I'm going to conclude with a few uh, key points. Just to sum up what I've said uh, throughout my presentation. So in, in the last 30 years, so since the 90s, uh, the global flower industry has been uh, an outstanding example of a highly integrated and very vibrant uh, and global supply chain, which has brought a significant uh, socio-economic contribution to uh, the key supplying countries around the world. The globalization of the industry that we have seen over the, the last 30 years has uh, driven greater efficiency in the supply chain and has uh, stimulated efforts across the industry to ensure that businesses are operated in a sustain, in, uh, sustainable manner and in a socially and environmentally responsible manner. So, it's also, but it's also because it is a highly integrated, highly uh, global industry where, with a lot of interdependence that the flower industry has been heavily challenged by uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, and by the economic uh, impact that, uh, that, and the consequences that, that we have um, observed since then. So, as I said, I believe the industry has the capacity to deal with new challenges um, and to adapt quickly and to capture new opportunities and that it will be again in the future uh, the best occasion, the best demonstration of the resilience of the flower industry that we have seen uh, over the last 30 years. So, this will be my... Uh, conclusion. So I thank you for your attention <laughs> and um, yeah, I will conclude here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 여러분 다시 한번 큰 박수 보내주시기 바랍니다. So now we have a question and answer session. So uh, if you have any question, 네, 혹시 질문이 있으시다면 저희가 잠시 연사님들과 소통할 수 있는 시간을 마련했거든요. 질문이나 의견이 있으시다면 손을 들어주시면 저희가 마이크를 전달을 드리겠습니다. Please let us know. 네, 혹시 질문이 있으실까요? 오늘 귀한 시간 내어서 또 참석을 이렇게 해 주셨는데요. 저희가 짧게나마 또 소통할 수 있는 기회이니까요. 말씀해 주신 내용 가운데 궁금한 점이 있으셨다면 손 들어 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 네, 마이크를 전달을 좀 부탁을 드릴까요? 마지막에 계시죠? Please. 아, 아. 네. 유럽, 일본, 영국에서 화의 소비량이 많은 이유가 무엇이라고 생각하시는지 궁금합니다. 다시 한번 일어나서 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 
네, 유럽, 일본, 영국에서 화해 소비량이 많은 이유가 궁금합니다. 양에 대해서 물어, 질문 주신 건가요? 네, 화의 소비량에 대해서 그게 어, 많은 소비량이 많은 이유가 무엇인지. 네. Yes. Okay. Well, I think there are there are several um, uh, factors that explain this. One of them is a, a cultural one. So there is a tradition uh, in Europe of, you know, buying flowers, having flowers in in our lives in. Uh, Uh, gardens in the UK, in particular, there's a very strong uh, gardening tradition uh, that explains also why why people are, are, are uh, buying maybe more than in other places. But I think it's also mostly linked to the economic uh, situation of these countries because we I didn't show it there, but there is it's been demonstrated that there's a very strong correlation. between the level of economic development of a country or a region and the consumption of flowers. So, as I said, flowers, even though we see them as very important to our lives, you could see say that it's not absolute, absolutely essential to survive. It's still a luxury uh, good. So people start buying flowers when the economic level of a country has reached a certain level. And they have basically the purchasing power to buy uh, flowers and plants. So that explains why, uh, in general, regions like Europe, US, and Japan have been ahead of other regions in the world because uh, because of the economic situation. Oh, 네, 고맙습니다. Thank you for your answer. 자, 혹시 한 가지 정도 질문을 더 나눌 수 있을 것 같은데요. 혹시 질문이 있으시다면 역시 손을 들어주시고요. 저희가 현재 동시 통역을 이용을 하고 있습니다. 한국어로 질문하실 때는 일어나셔서 천천히 대답해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 혹시 질문이 있으시다면 한 가지 정도 네, 마지막 질문으로 하도록 하겠습니다. Please? Mm -hmm. uh... 어, 화해 시장이 활발한 국가에서는 어, 고품질의 화해 수송을 위한 정부의 관리 지원을 많이 받고 있는지 궁금합니다. <웃음> 네, 답변 부탁드리겠습니다. Please. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. I think yes, my answer will be yes and no. <웃음> It's not It's not such a clear uh, pattern that uh, because you have government su support, automatically the industry, the flower industry, will, will be stronger. Yeah, it's a yes and no. I think you need, indeed, you need the government to um, enable it, so to stimulate it, to stimulate... Um, or to promote, let's say, the importance of, uh, of flowers, to enable economic um, uh, infrastructure, for example. Mm -hmm. So the investment, let's say, in the oper operating environment of the industry is very important. So as I was explaining, you need infrastructure. You need transport, uh, efficient transport that can bring flowers to your market, uh, you need uh, temperature management. Everything that the mayor was mentioning at the beginning, I think is a very, uh, very important element where government, uh, national and regional and local governments can have a, um, an important contribution. Uh, but it does not explain everything. <laughs> so it, it does open 
the opportunity, let's say, but I think it will not automatically result in a, in a stronger flower industry. You need also um, well-organized uh, operators. You need um, yeah, a high level of investment also from the private sector to make sure that the flower industry will develop and get stronger. So it's a combination. Uh, and that's what, what we have seen uh, very successful in, uh, in many countries is what we call um, PPP, public-private partnership. So that means when governments and the private sector work together on uh, developing the industry. So it's not one or the other, it's together the best, uh, the best way. Thank you for your answer. 네, 이렇게 저희가 더 많은 이야기 좀 나눠보면 좋겠지만 어, 저희가 원활한 진행 관계상 여기서 마무리를 좀 해야 할것 같습니다. Now it's time to wrap up the presentation. So thank you very much for your presentation. 여러분 다시 한번 큰 박수 보내주시기 바랍니다. 네, 고맙습니다. 세비 마미아스 연사님께서 주제 강연 수고해 주셨습니다.